research is I'm trying to engineer immune systems so that they are able to fight HIV. When people are infected with HIV, you know, one of the problems is that there is virus in their body, but the real problem is what that virus does to their immune cells. It gets into CD4 T cells and it kills them. I want to engineer the cells in the body, the stem cells that produce the CD4 T cells and make them impenetrable to HIV so that HIV is nowhere to go. Well, the most interesting finding in HIV cure research to me in the last year or so, I would have to say I'm very excited about the really detailed studies people are starting to do about what are the differences between people who do better or worse when they have HIV and have anti-HIV drugs. You know, we all know that it's, it's the same pill that everybody gets given. But some people have a really great result with those drugs, and the virus is squashed down to nothing, and their immune system comes back, and their CD4 T cells come back, and they're really, you know, they're doing really well. And other people taking exactly the same drug, their CD4 T cells don't come back to the levels we want them to. And we have kind of, you know, some ideas about why that's happening, but in the last year or so, we started seeing people use sort of big data approaches to trying to tease out the differences between individuals who have these very different outcomes. And what's exciting about that is that when we start to understand the differences, just the inherent genetic differences between people that give rise to these different outcomes, we can take that information and we can start thinking about making drugs and therapies that use that information. Can you tell us a little bit more about what big data is? Oh, yeah. So big data is this kind of catch-all phrase that just basically means stuff that's so complicated, you can't write it down on a piece of paper or even understand it once you're past the age of about 21. And instead, you have to put everything into really big computers and have the computer do the work for you. So really, in this case, it's about looking for patterns and saying, here's all the millions and millions of different um, pieces of information about two people. Here you go, computer. Tell me what's different about them. So, so big data is basically a way to take things that are too complicated for our human eyes and our human brains to understand, but we can use the power of computers to get the computer to do the work for us. Thanks. So we hear a lot of noise around us. We are currently at the International AIDS Society conference. There's a lot of people talking about a lot of interesting things. What are you most excited about seeing or doing at this conference? Okay, so we're actually at the sort of like a pre-meeting workshop that's specifically focused on HIV cure research. And you know, what's exciting to me is just the breadth of the approaches that people are taking. You know, no two talks are the same. And I love coming to things like this because just in a day and a half, everything gets crammed in. And sure, we don't know exactly where we're going at the moment. We don't know what the best approach is going to be, but I'm very inspired by the fact that everybody's trying all these different approaches, everybody's sharing information, and just the level of energy and enthusiasm around talking about this is really high. And what I personally love is the, the contributions we're getting from people who aren't scientists, people who are living with HIV, people who are members of the community, people who are their advocates. They come along to this meeting, they sit through this hardcore science stuff, and also, they understand a lot of it and they have inputs and they, you know, tell us what they think as well. That's very inspiring and a really important part of, you know, this meeting and the International Aid Society in general. Great. How important has AMFAR been in supporting your work? Okay, so AMFAR gave me a grant to do something um, pretty ridiculous actually. AMFAR funded me uh, to set up a collaboration with another scientist, Jonathan Kahn, who I never worked with previously, and between us, we are starting to look at whether or not we can identify HIV in certain cells in the brain that are called microglia. I knew nothing about them until you know, I started working on this AMFAR funded project. But we think that they may play a role in some of the um, sort of manifestations of HIV that can sometimes cause neurological problems. And importantly for cure research, we're a little bit worried in case these cells can also be a sort of a reservoir where HIV can hide out. So we're looking at that. We want to find out if HIV can hide in these cells. And if it can, we're going to figure out how to zap HIV out of those cells and get rid of it. So it's kind of cool because it's, it's sort of um, 
you know, it's a, it's a very sort of ambitious project and we had no data to present. And what I love about Amphar is that they say, you know, come to us with your good ideas and your crazy ideas and we'll fund you anyway to go ahead and do it. So, especially if you want to have two people or more than two people come together. So Amphar kind of, they're a bit of a matchmaking organization and I love that about them. But how optimistic am I that we're going to find a cure for HIV in the next five or ten years? I would say I'm absolutely certain, but I define cure as you're infected with HIV and I want to get you to the stage where you don't have to take drugs every day, you don't have to worry about infecting anybody else, and you don't have to worry about the long-term consequences to your immune system and your body of the fact that you may have some virus in your body. I think we can get there. We're starting to understand in a much more sophisticated way what HIV is doing in the body, how it's interacting with our immune system, and all the crazy little things it does that make it you know, such a lethal disease. One by one, we're starting to uncover those. One by one, we're starting to attack them. Within five to ten years, we'll be able to, I think, deal with all these things and turn around and say, okay, that's a cure.